So his motivations were quite complex. He understood, as an educated man too, how the uh, the Pope and the Roman and uh, the European powers looked at pagan Ireland. So therefore, there was no. Th th Spain would never, ever, what for one second, have come to the aid of an O'Neill, of an ancient Irish pagan title, no more than they would have come to the aid of, uh, what you call them, Red Cloud or, or, or an American Indian. You know, they wouldn't even consider it. So therefore, he had to stress his, his Catholicism and uh, his subservience to the to the um, to the the Roman the Roman Church, and they did help him for that reason more than anything else. Well, didn't Spain also want Kinsale so that uh, they could tithe England, you know, so that they more or less had a monopoly on, you know, Kinsale was an important port city at that time. Well, it turned out that um, we didn't know that they didn't know that at the time, but it turned out that it was just part of the negotiations that were leading up to what became the Treaty of London in 1603 and it turned out that it was really a feint. So de Avila that was sent there with 3,000 men was basically told to do nothing and he went back with most of his stores and most of the money, he never spent a nickel. He was a very, and, but that was his instructions. Um, that, uh, so therefore they weren't serious about it. If they had been, they would have gone around to the north, they would have come into the Lough Swilly, they would have come into Sligo, they would have gone to the north, but they made the uh, O'Neill and O'Donnell come all the way down to the south. So, any, 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 anybody, any other questions? I don't want one or two people monopolizing the, the thing, if you don't mind. So if there's any other questions, otherwise we're going to... You said that Spain was not very keen on the O'Neill. Mm -hmm. Yet, me, after the French of the Earth, a branch of the family settled in southern Spain, and they were accepted as noblemen, and Cardinal O'Fee went there for his holidays every year, as long as he lived. I, do th I, I accept that, but I put it to you, though, uh, Monsignor, that it was because they were great icons and champions of the Roman Catholic Church, rather than that they were ancient Irish families. Oh, but nevertheless, they were not, they were not uh, kicked out or anything, they were welcomed in Spain, and they still have no titles They Spain. would, but let me put it to you this way then, if they had gone down there as heretics, or yeah. Non-Christians would they've had their, that reception? Probably not. So. There, well, there you are. Yeah, but they, they were. You could say that now, but almost any of the times, there's some of them sat in, uh, settled in Holland. And well, Holland was Spanish at the time. You know, that was the Spanish Netherlands. And the Spanish. They did. My cap. They did. They did. Look at that. And they did. Jacket. They did. Yeah. And. But now uh, there were no great Irish uh, connection with Holland. The Netherlands, and yet they were welcomed there and became wealthy and well, they did. whatever. They did. They did because, um, as I said, uh, primarily because the Netherlands, the Lowlands, were the Spanish provinces. And uh, we know that one, some of the O'Neills changed their name to Payne, P A A I N E. And there's a very strong probability that Thomas Paine, who was from East Anglia, had actually was, uh, had migrated across, probably as a descendant of the uh, O'Neills of the Netherlands. And because uh, the name Paine doesn't, appear, it's not an English name and it's not a European name, it's a, an alternative name for the O'Neills. So in other words, Thomas Paine was almost certainly an O'Neill. Did he sign the Declaration of No, he didn't sign the Declaration of Independence. So I'm asking for Delphine, and she wants to know, so you're actually saying the O'Neills are Paines? Well, the Paines are O'Neills, let's put it that way. The Paines are O'Neills. Yeah. And it was a branch of the family who changed their name to Paines during the the Elizabethan Wars to try and stave off dispossession and just to like to 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 hide, if you're not hide, but at least to survive. And we know that there's a, an enclave of O'Neills in Carlow Kilkenny area, yeah. and, Cork. and Cork, particularly Cork. And uh, apparently, it was the 
the O'Neills of Cork, who are under tremendous pressure and stress from the Elizabethan court throughout that whole period, who changed their names to Payne. Uh, so, yeah. well, Thomas Payne is a, an American icon. He he wrote probably the most important book ever written in America called Common Sense, which uh, really sort of was the inspiration for the War of Independence at the common man level rather than. Why did they adopt pain? We've no idea. We've no idea, but there's a very powerful tradition that the pains were, they were very adamant about it, that they were really O'Neill's. I want to brag a little bit. Ah, <laughs> you're not going to get away that handy, folks, yet, Very man. Very good. Yeah. A lot of bullshit tonight. Oh. <laughs> so now we're going to hear the real thing here. No, I'm not going to talk about what you said. I know I have to agree that I don't agree with everything. Anyway. <laughs> you were allowed to think that uh, the importance of the O'Neill's and what they did is way back in those times, but they were also in the, our own time. And I have here in my hand a monument. By the way, you mentioned Mount Joy, that's part of our parish. You mentioned Dungannon, which is near town to me. You mentioned Ben Burb, down the street from. So that area. Cookstown, yeah. Well, Mount Joy was the, named after the infamous Lord Mount Joy, yeah. who uh, broke the stone at Tullahoe. He did. But anyhow, in practically in our own time, the O'Neill's did shine in defense of the church. And I have here just um, the writing on a monument that is in our Catholic church where I've said mass many times when I go home, in Clonot, parish of Clonot. There's a monument there, and it is erected to commemorate the Battle of the Black Bridge. Now, this little monument will tell you what that is. And here's what's written on it. Old Tyrone, first in the field and last to leave, glorious Clono will plant the tree of liberty as they have done in America. Should blood manure its roots, that our posterity may say when mourning o'er our graves, those heroes died for liberty rather than live like slaves. John O'Neill and Hugh O'Neill. He was my great-grandfather, John was my, his brother, my great-granduncle. And John Ritchie, a Protestant man, who was skilled in arms and had been in the British Army. And he advised them. Then there was James McCann, on my mother's side, my great-grandfather. They died, James McCann died in July 1869, aged 73 years. Bernard McCann, my, on my mother's side, my grand, great grand uncle. They heroically defended the Church of God from Orange desecration. The Orange men were marching from their uh, big day in Stewartstown, and they were going on to Armagh and to their homes in Armagh, and they determined on the way, they came to the Black Bridge, they decided to burn down the old parish church of Clonneau. The men that we have just read about and a whole bunch of people that they commanded, they were warned in advance and took up their position along the Black Bridge and they cut the Orange Army to pieces. And that's what that is, is for. Yeah. So they're, they're not just people of old of ancient history. Because I remember my grandfather, and he sang the song written at the Black Bridge fight. It is 22 verses, and it tells every single thing they did at the Black Bridge. Wow. And I remember when my uncle was uh, having his, what do you call it, he was betrothed. What do you call it? The party. Engagement. Engagement. The engagement party. Mm -hmm. One wag called my grandfather up to sing. And of course my grandfather sang <laughs> the Battle of the Black Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> and it has 22 verses. <laughs> and one of the boys that were there, one of the older boys that were there, he 
chipe in whenever my grandfather <laughs> came to about the eleventh verse, and he'd say, "That'll do you now, Mick. We'll take your award for the rest." Of you. <laughs> Is that, is that a good note to end on?